Hello everyone, I am Matias Sosa, bariatric and metabolic surgeon. Uh, thank you Guillermo and Bruno for your kind invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here with you sharing our experience in health and technology. Uh, I am here to talk about intelligence in health systems. So um, let's get started with the presentation. Um, as I mentioned before, I am Matias Sosa from Argentina. I am a bariatric and metabolic surgeon. This is an uh, obesity surgeon. Um, I am here to talk to you and share my experience in intelligence and health system from artificial intelligence to cost effectiveness. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Guillermo and Bruno for your kind invitation to, 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 be, to the invitation to be here in this great event. Uh, for me, it's an honor to share our experience with, with all of you. When we define intelligence, we can find a lot of uh, definitions and meanings, but the one what I like most is the ability to solve problems and to overcome adversity. But when we talk about artificial intelligence, um, according to the World I, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, um, in its last report, it is defined as the ability of algorithm to learn from data so they can perform automatic tasks without a uh, process having been programmed by explicitly by a human. So what does it mean? Is to uh, lay aside the human in its process to learn and to perform tasks and solve problems. When we must apply artificial intelligence in medicine, there's um, an old and ancient precept that is called primum non notary in every medicine act, which means in English, first, do no harm. And that's because artificial intelligence has challenges and risk. For example, unethical use of health data, uh, algorithm bias in patients' treatment, cybersecurity crimes, and, and obviously environmental concern. There are some basic principles and top priorities we must focus in. Uh, for example, the human autonomy of privacy and confidential information, patient concern and regulation, well-being and security, um, taking quality control and improvement to a constant up, up, update, um, transparency, easy access, promote democratic debates, and also the responsibility, accountability, sustainability, inclusion, and obviously equity, because the main reason of uh, artificial intelligence we must follow is to reach people and uh, close the gap between health systems and communities. Benefits are limitless, obviously. Uh, with artificial intelligence, we can diagnose, um, uh, we can improve diagnostic haste and accuracy. Um, we can ease clinical access care. Uh, we can support health and pharmaco pharmacological research. But the most important thing here, I think, is to support healthcare um, by helping in surveillance diseases, helping with control of epidemics, uh, managing, managing health systems, and obviously closing the gap to healthcare access. And how do we close the gap of health access? Artificial intelligence in medicine artists and beyond. In these cases, we can, we can see how artificial intelligence can help us treating odontological patients um, with designing with the design of perfect tooth implants or on the upper right image, uh, helping a surgeon to reach some hidden or very um, um, hidden organs without or at least reducing considerably the, the, the risk of injury of another organ. Or in the image below, 
when we can uh, that it's called image guide surgery where the patient when the patient is injected with a contrast called ICG and in this way we can uh, see more clearly with a change of button of the camera what structure which structure needs to be taken out or not during a, a surgery but closing the gap also means removing barriers and here artificial intelligence have a great impact uh, in, in healthcare and in access to telemedicine in particular. And when I talk about uh, telemedicine, it's not only it's like just like this picture when uh, there are a doctor, there is a doctor and, um, and, and, and a patient in, in the comfort of his, his or her living room, but also telemedicine means a lot more, means a doctor sharing her, his knowledge with another two colleagues in a rural area a very uh, far away, along uh, so many kilometers or miles away, talking about patient cases, treatments possible, because knowledge is power, and knowledge would be the power to improve and enhance communities that are very far away from big cities. How do we do it? In this case, and um, in my particular opinion and experience, uh, I run, as I mentioned before, um, uh, on an obesity center called CITOS, and we had a milestone, a huge milestone that uh, defined the way we could um, bring access to obesity surgery, for example, and in my case. And it was the COVID pandemic. There was a before and an after of the COVID pandemic because we had to reinvent ourselves to reach patients and for patients to access health care, in particular bariatric surgery. In our case, patients reach us through the web or social media and we can, we can bring experiences like this one. Here is the case of Marian. He was a very few days uh, uh, before the surgery. And here is the, um, the post-operative photo uh, after seven days after his uh, her gastric bypass. What I mean is that in, in, the, in this case of Marian, I met her in person a few minutes before the surgery, but I had so many Zoom meetings before that that put um, that helped her and us to uh, um, define a bond between patient and doctor that let us uh, arrive and achieve um, um, great results. This is the other case of Gisela. She's about um, 200 miles away from here, from my city. Um, in, the, in the left picture, we can, we can see a, a sub-meeting um, carried out a few weeks before her surgery. And in the right picture, we, we can see how we celebrate the month after uh, her surgery with an Instagram Live. The same thing happened with another patient who reached you and sent you a message saying that, I don't know, um, um, she can wear jeans again due to the surgery, or now she had to uh, renew her, her, all the, uh, her closet, or in particular, in particular, defying and celebrating uh, every moment with, his, uh, with her family. So being intelligent not only uh, means uh, artificial intelligence, but in biotic surgery in particular, being intelligent means saving time, resources, and money. The other pandemic besides COVID was uh, the obesity pandemic. And in the US and Latin America, six out of 10 people suffer obesity. 
comorbidities that are the related diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, uh, and so on, are very frequent in this population. For example, insulin costs vary from 70 to 19 dollars per week in the U.S. Of these people, of these people, life expectancy is 10 to 15 years less than none of these people. And, and this is why um, science uh, is, and, and particularly scientific journals, can show you, show us what is the best way to approach a patient with obesity in particular. We can see how surgery benefits uh, along the, 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 the post-operative months, not only uh, with one particular surg surgical technique, but also uh, comparing it with no surgical group. But this can be translated also to um, other others, uh, diseases such as diabetes, which significantly are improved by surgery, uh, not at five, but also at 10 years. And we are having these patients so far away, um, very close to the obesity center, which is treating, treating them. According to cost effectiveness in bariatric surgery, we can see that there is a huge, huge saving in patients which are obese and undergo a bariatric surgery in the uh, numbers of the uh, health ministers, particularly in the UK. And this is another uh, um, uh, scientific paper that show us how bariatric surgery can improve and can save money for the health services, national services, in another paper of the UK. So beyond the, the, the economical benefits, there is a benefit that it is not measurable. That is the life expectancy improvement in every patient with obesity. And in this case, artificial intelligence can show us the lead or the path, the path, sorry, to achieve that goal that is to enhance and, 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 and reach people which is outside our communities and is left behind uh, of the healthcare system currently. Um, I think that uh, for, for our future and uh, our mission is to be intelligent, artificially or not, but it need, we need to be intelligent. Uh, thank you very much for your invitation and I would like to see if, if you uh, enjoy and, and, and profit my, my experience with uh, artificial intelligence applied in my, in my hometown.